This is Stock Gamer 007 here. And before we get started the VGB Bulletin, the link to all news articles and timestamps for this video is going to be in the description below. And let's get started. This is the VG Bulletin as of July 27th to through July 31st. There's a couple Nintendo and Square Enix news and one side of the Hedgehog news. So let's move on to the news article. Splatoon 2 sold 65% of the initial shipment in Japan. According to Nintendo Everything, Switch numbers increased 100 thousand units in Japan on the launch of Splatoon 2. Sales were up 128.18% from last week in Japan. We need to wait a little longer to see the total sales for Splatoon 2. Well, it most likely shouldn't be that long. On the second Nintendo article, Nintendo officially confirms the functionality of Metroid Samus Return New Amiibo. By scanning the new squishy Metroid Amiibo, you receive the mode that provides a new level of difficulty as Samus Fusion Suit from Metroid Fusion. That's Metroid Game Over. It was also confirmed by Nintendo that these Amiibo features will be exclusive, obviously, to these Amiibos. So, that means you need to buy these, these Amiibos to play the new Fusion mode. To be honest, I'm not into collecting amiibos. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't understand why people buy amiibo. Nintendo is basically selling you day one DLC as part of amiibo. Personally, I'm not gonna get this amiibo, but I am definitely gonna get Metroid Samus Return because I am a more of a Metroid 2D fan because I love Metroid Fusion. League. I love that game. I'm a more 2D Metroid fan than a Prime, a Prime fan. I only played the first Prime and I did not like it that much. Please don't hate on the comments and chat. Those are Colts against Prime, but I'm more a fan of the 2D ones. Um, so this game, um, Metroid Samus Returns, is definitely a day one for me. Well, there is a Nintendo rumor spreading around that Nintendo is telling Walmart not to accept pre-orders of the SNES Classic. Last week, everyone who everyone who pre-order of SNES Classic was cancelled. And everybody was wondering, why Walmart? Why would you don't want our money? And this explains it. <laughs> it also explains why no other retailer is taking pre-orders. Nintendo is shady. I don't know, man. What's the problem for uh, retailers to pre uh, take pre-orders for their highly anticipated uh bundle system nostalgic system I, I don't understand unless Nintendo's lying about increasing the amount SNES classic than the NES classic like it's like they probably increase like by 2,000 more and they're like oh it's way more I, I don't know man it's maybe still gonna be a limited numbers when they release and everybody's gonna snatch it up because it's Star Fox 2 I want to know if that's the actual, um, the last build one that's leaked on the internet, or is it actually the final, final game? But uh, no matter what, people is going to dump that Star Fox 2 on the internet for all emulator users to play. Um, yeah, so let's get on to the next Nintendo Switch news. Capcom reported the latest financial results earlier today. Capcom stated that Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenger, the company's first Switch game, is a quote unquote smash hit. And it quote unquote made an excellent start. Capcom appears to be pleased of the performance of Street Ultra Street Fighter 2. The game shipped 450,000 copies in Q1, which was above expectations. Perhaps due to Ultra Street Fighter 2 sales, Capcom looks to be putting more resources towards the Switch. The, pu the publisher is now starting to prepare for multiple Switch titles as a, re as a relay by Takashi Bakazuki, 
I hope I didn't butcher that name. From the Wall Street Journal. Good news, Nintendo. Capcom needs to consider making more Switch games now. Because Nintendo Switch is a reliable platform. In my opinion, PlayStation is not enough for Capcom to survive with it. With it. Street Fighter V and and all that stuff. I don't think it's good to survive. Oh, right. Capcom need another reliable platform, and that's the Nintendo Switch. Capcom needs to make an exclusive Nintendo Switch game that that old and new fans could enjoy. Maybe Mega Man, like a new Mega Man. Game. Maybe I love a new Mega Man. Game. Not a classic. None of that. Really. That uh. Those collections, not X collection. I want a hundred percent new Mega Man game. With, like, like, like. I don't want to say like newer graphics, like 2.5D stuff like that. I don't know, like the new Metro game that's coming out. That really, but brand new. So let's get on to quick bullets of the Nintendo Switch news. This is a part of. This is a new part of my format. I already said this in the last bulletin. Go, we go through small news with without commenting on on it like really much these bullet points is gonna be these the links to all these bullet points like it's gonna be in the description below all right number one the first bullet the next weapon for Splatoon 2 was released called the, the dually squigglers that is another version of the splat dualies the world ends with new character design that shares a new art to celebrate the 10th Year anniversary. Please, Squirtix, a sequel. <laughs> a sequel, please. Snake by releasing a, a gamepad S Pro controller for the Switch this fall. They stated, "Quote: Switch owners will immediately appreciate the difference delivered by the high-performance build quality and familiar control layout." Still no word for price. And all you Sonic the Hedgehog fans, Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel, they released a new remix. Well, a remix of Star Speed Way Zone Act 1 for Sonic Mania. This is the song. It's a great remix. Alright, let's talk about Final Fantasy 15 for a bit. Final Fantasy 15 Regalia. Well, Final Fantasy 50 Regalia announced for Forza Horizon 3. So you need to purchase Final Fantasy 15 on the Xbox and Forza Horizon 3 to get this, this unlockable. It's not like DLC at the last step. You have to have the games, the two games, in your library. Okay. Let's go to the huge Nintendo Switch news. Xenoblade developer Monolith Soft recently posted an interesting job listing on its website. The company is recruiting a game planner for its main branch in Tokyo. The person will be hired, will be involved with creating specifications of characters, ads, action, draft, design, and construct battles and rules. Overall, Monolith Soft wants someone who has experience with developing action games. All right, let's go with the modelist highlights for the following interesting points uh, that was gathered up by Nintendo Everything. The description, look at the description below if you want anything um, to this link. All right, those who have much knowledge of online games, those that have much knowledge of medieval and fantasy settings, those who have much knowledge in, of trends, and that's for two trends, pop culture, and entertainment overseas. That means all Western game. Gonna get a Western type game to please the Western audience. I could tell. It's possible that Modelist Soft, the, the Modelist Soft, the Double Chronicle X team is making a new IP. It could even be possible to be a sequel to Zelda Chronicles X because it did say fantasy settings, but it said trends and pop. They could put that in, in a online Xenoblade Chronicles X. Like, that's, po that's possible. And they want it more Western. They could make Xenoblade Chronicles X more Western if they want. Make it an action game. More action. Like, ditch the Xenoblade uh, combat. I love Xenoblade, Chron um, Xenoblade Chronicles combat, though. 
But uh, they could do that and make it a huge open world for Nintendo. So, in my opinion, Xenoblade Chronicles X was huge enough to make an open world. So they could, if they wanted to, they could use the same world and make a like an action game in there. But it's most likely going to be a new IP. Alright. So let's go to two days before the release of Dragon Quest XI. Square Enix announced at July 28th, around 11.30, that Dragon Quest is releasing in the West. No rumors, but 100% to be released in 2018 in the West. With this news, Dragon Quest XI got a localized name called Dragon Quest XI Echoes of the Exclusive Age. And it did not announce the platform. But speculating, I'm gonna be speculating on this. I think that Dragon Quest built up a, a huge fan base on PC. So I, because of the release of Dragon Quest One and Two, Dragon, well, let me say this because Dragon Quest One and Two is actually a game on Switch. Dragon Quest Heroes One and Dragon Quest Heroes Two, and a lot of people bought it on PC, PS4 because it made a, it was made for it in Japan, and I truly think. That Square Enix is not going to localize the 3DS version because the 3DS will be irrelevant in 2018. I believe so. Pokemon is going to the Switch 2018. All those major games. Kirby is going to the Switch. They don't need a 3DS. It's, it's moved on. It's moved on. So, I believe that it's going to it's gonna be the Switch version. And the Switch version is going to be released in the Japan and in the West at the same time. Because it looks like Square Enix is holding that hostage. And I believe it's going to come West and Japan at the same time. When the, when the Switch sell more units and it's going to be a bigger stall base. And people in Japan will buy it a second time. Because they did it with Monster They're going to do that. A lot of people are pre-ordering Monster Hunter and Double Cross. But it came out on the, earlier this year in Japan. It's going to come out again on the, on the Switch. And people's going to buy it again. That's how business works. That's, that's my opinion. I would like your opinion in this comment section below. So, yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want videos like this one. This is Talk Gamer 007. I see you in the next one. Peace.